Bible reading today comes from Luke chapter 2, verse 21 to 24. And at the end of the eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus. He was given the name by the angel before he was uh, conceived in the womb. And when the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, and to offer the sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Not my father, not my mother, but it's me, oh Lord. Saying in the need of prayer. Not my father, not my mother. But it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Yeah, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not the preacher, not the deacon, but it's me, oh Lord, standing. Not the deacon, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Cause it's me, it's me, it's me oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's not my father, not my mother, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Yeah, it's me. Nadia and her family were on their way to visit the monastery of St. Samuel in Egypt when she saw some men in military clothing. Nadia thought they were there to protect the monastery. When the men shot the wheels of their bus and climbed aboard, Nadia realized she was wrong. The terrorists asked each man on the bus to convert to Islam or die. They stopped next to her son, Hani. Nadia watched on from the back of the bus. And she saw Henny raise his wrist, revealing a cross tattoo. Then she heard his last words, no, I am a Christian. 
Maybe you think I would rather have seen my son make a different choice, Nadia said. And of course, as a mother, I am terribly sad and angry that I lost my son. But I'm happy that I witnessed the faith I raised in him. I'm thankful that he wouldn't deny Christ even with his life in danger. He made the right choice, she said, and that's been a huge comfort to me. Nadia survived the bus attack despite being struck by a bullet in her arm. Without God's comfort, I would have gone crazy, she said. Her favorite Bible verse is Matthew 10, 28. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Instead, fear the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. If I meet the attackers of my son and they kill me for my faith, I'd be happy, she said. Then I would join my son in heaven, but I pray that they will be touched by God so they will change their ways. I can't really fathom that. John 19, 25 to 27. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, Here is your mother. From that time on, the disciple took her into his home. Lord, we come to you today knowing you are in control, yet seeing people in pain and suffering around our world. We offer that world to you today. We offer what we know of the world to you and ask for your healing on people, nations and all your creation. This morning we would have had a visit and a message from Gabriel from Open Doors who work with the persecuted church. We pray for them and we pray for that organisation. Give them opportunity within this health crisis to assist those of your people who are struggling for their faith. We pray also for the world we live in with its restrictions, even though there is some hope of returning to normality. Help us as the restrictions lift to be wise, to find ways of encouraging people around us and to make contact with those we have missed. Be with those who are sick, not only from the virus, but in all manner of illnesses. Sustain them, encourage them, and be with them. Lord, today we pray for our mums. We thank you for them and we remember those who have left us and we honour those who are still with us. We thank you for the way they have been so much part of our journey to who we are. Be with our mums, grandmas, and great-grandmas this day. Bless them and help us to bless them also. Lord, we pray for ourselves personally, that we may draw closer to you, that we will listen to your word and that we will enact those things that you have directed us in. Lord, we pray for our church, that we are being your people, that we are moving in your direction and that we are doing your mission. Lord, we pray for our nation and its leaders, its organisations that run our country. Be with each component that the things may be done to assist the unemployed, the lonely, the financially disadvantaged and those disabled in some way. Lord, you are a great God and you listen and act on our prayers. We thank you and we worship you. In your name, amen.
Welcome to the second week of our mission uh, series and this one's about uh, a mum's mission or a mission to mums. Um, let me just say at this point, happy Mum's Day to all the mums out there. Um, I hope you're being spoiled. I hope that uh, everybody's really looking after you because you guys deserve it. As I mentioned, we're talking about um, a, mission's, a mum's mission or a, a mission to mums or a mission from mums. And, and we have to ask ourselves the question, what, what is a mother's mission? What is the mission in a mum's life? Mary Ann, my wife, thinks that it is uh, to do the best that she can for her boys, all three of us, Jackson and Flynn and myself. Uh, but it also is to do with that she tries to do the best that she can for God. That all sounds sometimes uh, a little bit too hard. Um, if you've seen the boys' bedrooms or you've seen how many bikes, guitars, cameras, button accordions, trains and other assorted collections that I have in around the house. And then there's, of course, the boys muck up and I do mean all three of us. Life is extremely busy. Uh, I work funny hours. The boys have got their sport and um, their bowling and different things like that. And they're 16 and 13, they're boys. But I remember when they were first born, Jackson and Flynn, that is not me, they were so cute and vulnerable, and I, I still think they're excessively cute. However, I may be a touch biased, but I, I, I didn't know what to do with them. Uh, I, I'd never had much to do with babies before, but Marianne did. She had plenty of experience with babies. She is the eldest of her, all her cousins, and she, she's a great mum. And these precious little ones, he'd give them to me and I'd be so tense, no, I didn't want to drop them. And Marianne was just totally natural at it. We love them dearly, but it's a lot of work, you know? For years there was no sleep-ins and there's still no sleep-ins. And really, there's not much rest either for a mum. The reality is, mum is always seems to be the first point of call for any emergency, isn't she? Even Mary had that with Jesus. This little being in her arms, she knew he was different, but he was still so little and so vulnerable. And I dare say that she thought he was cute. I've never really thought of God as being cute, uh, but let's face it, mums think that their children are cute. Mary's mission was to care for the Son of God. Now that is a one huge job. Let's look at uh, Luke chapter 2, verse 16. And they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all of these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen. What a great story. We heard that at Christmas, which really isn't too long ago. But how does that reflect on, on us, on mums now? Our, our, their job is to care for people that they've been entrusted with, their children, our children, husbands, etc., I don't see that we have 
Much difference in jobs between us and mums from a spiritual perspective. But yet as we have a look at what we're doing, what we need to realise is that we need to be in a place of care too. And I guess Mary had to contest with all the things that that regular mums did, sleepless nights, dirty nappies and loads of washing, and she didn't have disposable nappies or a washing machine. She had to do all of that as well as knowing that this child was the son of God. And notice the big thing here. Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. She treasured them. She kept them close. She made them valuable to herself. But also notice she pondered them. We all treasure our children, but do we ponder them? Well, Mary Ann and I wonder what goes on in the brains of our boys. But one thing I think we need to dwell on is this ponder concept. The best way to ponder is to prayer, someone said. Not only in asking for protection and health and care or even spiritual development, but pondering through prayer what God has for these children or this this child. What is God's will for our child? In my case, for Jackson and for Flynn. One thing I remember after Flynn was born was Marianne's reaction. She said that God is exalted by Flynn's birth. And theologically, it struck a chord with me. The birth of a child, a little boy, was an act of worship, an act of worship from my wife. And we've had to think about that. God is exalted by people's presence. Did Mary pray for Jesus? What did she say? For after all, she was the one person who had an inkling how special Jesus was at that time. Maybe we need to ponder who our children are, who they will be, and who they could be. Then pray through those ponderings. Maybe that is part of the mission of mums. My mum would would come in of a night Uh, when I was in bed and pray for me and with me. I know she still prays for me every day. And for that, I'm very thankful. Let's move on before I get too emotional here because after all, I don't get to see my mum on Mum's Day very often and particularly not this year. So let's look at a couple of other verses. This one comes from Luke chapter 2 and verse 21. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise him, He he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he had been conceived. When the time of their purification, according to the law of Moses, had been completed, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what it is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Notice here, Mary and Joseph did what they had to. Their belief structure and system had ways of dedicating the children. We dedicate our children in church, and this is a presentation of the child and the parents to God. They did what was expected. We need to do the same. Not, not, and we need to put our children in the place to hear about Jesus and, and educate them about who Jesus is from an early, an early start. They did it on day eight. They did it on day eight. And the idea is that the child begins the connection with God right from the outset. Mum and Dad had me in church the first Sunday I was out of hospital. But do you know something funny? They forgot to get me dedicated. I went through Sunday school and experienced Christian endeavour and I, and I grew up and was baptised and then I went on to do different ministry stuff. And then when Marianne and I got married, we were sitting around the table one time and Mum and Dad said that they forgot to dedicate me. But they dedicated me in other ways. That's not a criticism of mum and dad. They dedicated me in other ways. They made sure that I knew about Jesus all the time. One more verse for us to have a look at. This comes from 
from John chapter 19. Near the cross, Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister Mary, and the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and his disciple, whom he loved, standing nearby, he said to his mother, Dear woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, the disciple took her into his home. How horrid would it have been for Mary to see her son executed? It's gone from this baby that she was so intimate with to this man on the cross. But she was there. I think the biggest thing about mum's missions is always to be there at every single stage of their lives. It is a beautiful picture of Mary supporting her son. And in return, Jesus giving the support of his mate, John, her adopted son it becomes. John has support, Mary has support. Mums have a mission to love their children through thick and thin. Mary Ann tells a story about her grandma and grandpa in how they reacted to Mary Ann's uncle John, who was part of a bikey gang. The family were in church and John was there with them one Sunday, sitting right down the front, when in walked a bunch of the guys from the bikey gang to get Uncle John to go and be involved in a rumble. Uh, that's bikey terminology for fight. Then and Grandpa, they, the grandparents didn't bat an eyelid. Uncle John went. They stuck with him through thick and thin. Through thick and thin. He became a Pentecostal pastor. It isn't always easy, but mission and, uh, of mums is always really, really being there sometimes. Well, these have just been a few thoughts about mums and on Mum's Day, and I, I want to just say thank you to mums for, for just being who you are. But remember, all of us today, to honour mums in their mission, to help mums do their mission. I hope and pray, mums, you have a great day, that the rest of us spoil you like nothing on earth. Bless you all. We'll see you next week. He is exalted by your being here. He is exalted by your presence here He is exalted by your being here He is exalted you being in His presence here You were created to worship God Your voice was given in His praise You come with me To sing and pray You are here right now To worship in His name He is exalted By your being here He is exalted here. He is exalted by your being here. He is exalted, you be in his presence here. We join with the whole earth and we worship God. We combine with creation to see. Gather together to sing and pray. We here right now to worship in His name. He is exalted by Your being here. He is exalted by Your presence here. By your being here, he is exalted.
Our benediction this morning comes from Genesis 31 and verse 49. And I'll leave you with this thought today. The Lord watch between you and me when we are out of one another's sight. Bless you all.